speaking of speaking of invest fest i want to ask keith this question because um he has the the distinguished honor of having the highest rated episode in Earn Your Leisure platform history. Um, Billy Carson, I think, is at 8 million. Oh, so he, he's going to correct you. How many yeah, you it's almost up to 10 million, but it's <laughs> I, I, I was trying to save him, because I know you're going to Who's counting these things, right, Keith? Who's counting? 9.2 million with, with Billy. And then um, Yaki Awaken is number three with almost four, 3.9 million. And then you got another one with um, Billy with 2.4 million and then i think you have another one with billy carson as well um we've done a few with billy carson so mm -hmm. all right billy carson yaki awaken this is an interesting conversation to have at invest fest um what can we expect from this live high level conversation that will take place what i can say <laughs> um, let's leave with that <laughs> <laughs> everything can't be divulged but you know what i can say is expect the unexpected right i think that when i look at the landscape of culture right now um i get quite frankly disappointed um and because when i think about the past we had so many things that we don't have now we had black unions and black caucuses to where we would sit and we would have conversations uh, with leaders about our future and focus on solving our problems our way and at least having our expressive opinions at the table. Right. And that was the thought leadership of our society, of our culture that we would take. And so, you know, being able to have a roundtable discussion because it's not a panel, it's a roundtable. Right. We think about. You know, they have a project 2025, but what is our project 2025? Yeah. What is our project 2044, right? What is our project 2053? And so because I'm somebody who focuses on decolonizing the future, which is this concept that the more that we feed into their ideas about the future, the more colonized we are in our mind. And all we do is evolve on the concepts and ideas and give birth to them. But when we decolonize the future, we're basically saying that we are deciding what the future is for ourselves. And yes, it does start with conversation, right? Because when you go look at the founding fathers of this country, these were men that were in their late 20s to early 30s that were able to sit down and they were able to plan the, essentially uh, documentation, plans, rules and orders for the next four to five hundred years. And so I think what it takes is a group of people that can mastermind and bring intellect together for the explicit purpose of planning the future and then giving orders out so that the people that are listening go in and execute. But we don't have collective visions and collective ideas. And so bringing together a brain trust of people who have platform right who focus on intellect who focus on solving problems who are outside the bounds of what say what we i call safe america right um i didn't want to go with safe america i wanted to go with disruptors i wanted to go with people that you're going to question because this is how you're going to get things different right the radical creatives and so the conversation that we're going to have is going to be very very visionary very solution based Right. And I think that people are going to be able to take orders from this and have marching orders on what to do next. But also there's going to be some surprises about, you know, what are the plans for the future? Because the idea becomes is what does a high level culture look like? What does a high level world look like? And if we can get that deeply embedded into the mind and we start investing into that, just within the next 365 days, we can change things so radically right? That the world doesn't even look the same whatsoever. And I think that we have to really get on radical change. Like what can we do in between the next, you know, few cycles that will change everything. And I really get deep into good influence, right? My focus right now is creating this good influence program where we take influence and we look at it as an economy and we really focus on what we influence and to scale things. But I say good influence because there's so many influencers, but there's a lot of bad influence, 
right? Good influence is good leadership, right? That has positive impact on our culture. So identifying those issues, problems, and areas to where we can have positive impact is what I want to be able to lay down the blueprint for the people coming up at InvestFest. And it's going to be very powerful. It's going to be stimulating. And it's going to be a moment that becomes a movement. There you have it. Wowzer. Will he be bringing the Anunnaki and the Emerald Tablets? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the one thing about, and I had a, actually, I got a high level coming with Dr. Wesley about the Anunnaki, and it's, that's going to shake up some things. But the, the thing about, I like about Billy Carson, it's not about the aliens, it's not about the Anunnaki, it's about his study of civilizations. Civilizations that have failed, civilizations that have been birthed. And so we think about that is, how do you birth a better civilization, right? How do you birth a better culture? What were the things to look out for? What are the things that are the patterns of success? And so I really want to get deeper into that knowledge, right? When we think about the Anunnaki, these were real civilizations, right? These were real things that took place in history. But because we're giving just a populist thread of history, that you know we learn in school we look at these as like this extra crazy spooky thing but this is real artifacts real history right the only difference is the understanding of that history the translation but more importantly what caused them to fail what caused the different civilizations in time to fail what caused them succeed how did they build their own language what were their paths to creating their culture that got to this high level to where we're having conversation about it today and i think those are the things that we need to reinstall right within the culture now because they are very much missing we have a lot of entertainment a lot of arts but marcus garvey he come up with the the STEAM program, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. But we took out the STEM and all we got is the arts, right? But where, who is the most popular scientist? Who is the most popular technologist? Who is the most popular engineer? Who is the, 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 who is making the most strides and changes in the fields of mathematics that look like us? And so I think that there's not a real representation of culture. There's just a representation of populist agenda, Industry, arts, and entertainment, and we call that culture. Hmm. hmm. There you have it. Stem to steam. There you have it. Stem to steam. Keys, real. I, I mean, I just want to follow because you're thinking from an educational standpoint with the the power of machine learning, and I think they said that Chat uh, 5.0 will be at a PhD level of, of education. What what does that look like to the future? I guess of our community, but all communities from a standpoint of having that knowledge gap decrease in such an expedited time? Yeah, I think it's interesting. We look at uh, the chat GPT uh, 5.0 and any other models that's going to come because what we're really going to see is this customization of these models learning you in your processes, right? And my formula for AI is AI plus NI equals EI, artificial intelligence plus natural intelligence equals enhanced intelligence so what it gives us as a potential right is the opportunity for us to be able to enhance our intelligence if we look at it as a wealth transfer we're basically saying that you know all things that we couldn't afford at first we now have access to right my chief thesis as things that were only available for the rich as luxuries Right. You think about a billionaire having an assistant that can go source information from them, give them data reports. Right. Um, even large companies being able to take, you know, reports from other data analytic companies and make decisions based on that. We can do that now. Right. Being able to have a team of specialists in their field as experts in writing, experts in research, experts in design. Right. Uh, whatever it may be, you have that now as a subscription. So then the question becomes is what do what is our will, right? What do we actually have in vision? Because if you got chat GPT five or it could be chat GPT 18, it doesn't matter if you don't have a vision for something, if you don't have a goal yourself. So for me, the, the mentality standpoint starts at, OK, if we look at the 1960s and 70s, right, and we look at the civil rights movement, they had a lot of demand for the culture but they didn't have the resources. They had this demand for things that they wanted to change, right? And even had an outlier vision. 
Today, we have all the resources, but none of the demands, meaning that what are we going to do with the technology now that we have the resources? And this is why we focus on the willfulness and everybody is not an entrepreneur. Everybody is not a visionary. And this is where we get to customize the roles that we play in society. Some people are guides. Some people execute. Some people are visionaries. Some people are just stewards of the dream. And I think that on an important level, as we are going through a mental health crisis in America, black men specifically, I know I can name off the top of my head, like almost six to seven black men are going through mental and spiritual crisis in their life right now. And so I declare it a state of emergency. So another way I'm looking at is how does it help us, right, in the medical fields? How does it help us in the mental health fields? And I think that there's so many opportunities for us to be able to, you know, um, create programs that allow us to become self-aware, to understand these metrics of, you know, stress determiners, um, understand, you know, how we're supposed to operate on purpose, most people don't know their human design type, right? Most people don't know their intelligence type, their personality type. So they're not operating on a customized knowledge of self grid to say, okay, this is how I should be doing this. This is why I'm doing this. People go to therapists or talk therapy to learn more about who you are. And there's so many people right now that are stuck in roles that don't fit their soul. It don't fit their spirit. And so even when they succeed, they still find themselves depressed. Right. And my goal is to utilize AI in a manner that helps people become more self-aware. I've been talking with a brother in Australia that has a program that helps people understand themselves the more they use it because there's this physiological uh, and, and psychological connection, you know, between how the body responds and why you get this stress built up based on your psychological profile and who you are. And I think that that's where we need to focus at, because if we're not mentally healthy, we're not ever going to become wealthy. The biggest issue that we have in a black community is the family dynamic. And so we can't get to family unless we get mentally right first, because ain't no women going to want no crazy men. and Ain't no men going to want no crazy women. So if we can get our minds right and then we get our values right and we're utilizing AI to be able to, you know, create self-test and be able to customize ways to where we can, you know, have therapy regiments and it can automatically guide us to lowering baselines of issues and problems that we have and even possibly self-diagnosis ourselves in many different ways, we can get to a point to where we're clear enough to deal with each other. And I think that in the wealth equation, the mental health and the spiritual health of the people is missing. So this is why you can give people the right information. You can give them the right technology, but they're in front of themselves, right? The shadow work that they need to do, the spiritual work. But deeper than that, do you even understand who you are? So I think that this is something that the rich are able to do. They are able to get somebody that can tell them about themselves so that they can get back to peak performance, right? So that they can get to a center of alignment. So, you know, my goal is focusing on how do you live at your 100%, right? So as I'm utilizing AI, I might create GPTs that I program with information on me so that is customized and personalizing this information, tailoring it to my needs, right? And so now I get to know myself deeper. Why do I think this way, right? And so as I've been going through this, it puts me in a master seat, right? So now I'm not doing things that go against, you know, my energy. I'm doing things that are aligned with who I am. And, you know, as we create these more systems and creating more GPTs and we personalize them and reprogram them. Yeah, it's going to be easier for parents to homeschool and educate their children and create curriculums because what was the hardest thing at first? A parent's not a teacher. They don't know all those things, but now a parent can sit down and they can get the answers. Mm -hmm. They can create a GPT, you know, that forces the parent to go through a learning curve to be able to teach their child based on the goals that they have for their child. Because a lot of people think because they get pregnant and they become a parent that they're going to be a good one. And that's just not true. And we need to start having standards for that. Right. And I think that now that we have the technology, we need to use it in a way to increase our standards that we have for our mental and our spiritual health, which ultimately leads to our wealth. So I would say utilize the AI as much as you can to personalize self-education, 
increase that learning curve so that you become smarter and more efficient in the way that you go about doing things. 